Hey you guys, Queso Fuego here, uh, making a video bright and early in the morning, about 5.30, 5.40, um, I'm tired, so I got my coffee. So maybe it won't make too much sense today, but today I'm going to start, I don't know about starting a series because I usually don't don't finish those, but uh, start maybe a video or two going over um, basic operating system from the the low level ground up kind of sort of deal although I'm, I'm only learning this is not professional or anything by any means as you can tell from I look and sound probably but we're just starting at the very beginning um, and by that I mean just booting up from a basic like 512 byte boot sector and then use an assembly 16-bit real mode that sort of thing as as I learn can go along I'll, I'll try to make short videos like this that uh, uh, go over what I know so far, which is probably wrong, but might might work. So <laughs> that'll be pretty well. But I recommend you get coffee of your own or a snack or something and just, yeah, maybe you'll find it interesting. Maybe you won't, but I guess I'll get to it now. Um, we're doing x86 CPU emulation. I'm using Box Emulator, B-O-C-H-S. Uh, if this text is too small, let me know. If the picture is weird with me in the corner, let me know. Anything. I can change, and I probably will change the layout of this as we go along. But uh, BOCHS box x86 emulator. I was thinking of using QEMU or KMU or however you say that. But it's just I didn't really feel like installing like five separate things and learning a front end for it. I can just use box, and it, it works for basic um, full CPU emulation. So I figure it's it's fine. But uh, we don't have anything to run it against at the moment. I am using uh, Ubuntu Linux for this, which the audio probably sounds different from what I normally do because the drivers aren't great, but that's okay. It, it's serviceable. Um, but I'm using Ubuntu Linux, um, Box. Uh, I have Emacs open, as you can see, and it's 25, so it's an old version. <laughs> Should probably update that one of these days. Uh, but yeah, and it currently, if I try to run it, there's there's nothing there. There's no configuration. It doesn't run anything, so we're just going to... Uh, do a 7 and exit that. Um, he's in terminal mode in Emacs here. So where are we going to start? We're not going to start at the hardware level, transistors, that sort of thing. Um, I'm starting from basic boot sector, uh, MBR, master boot record, to be exact. But when you start and your computer boots up, um, it looks for a boot sector on your, your bootable media, right? Your USB, your floppy, or whatever, your hard drive, SSD. It'll look in the first 512 bytes of that uh, that bootable media, and it'll look for, for two magic numbers or one magic number at the end, and the last of the 511 and 512th byte. It'll look for, I think, AA55, or 55AA, depending if you're Big Indian, Little Indian. X86 is Little Indian, which means the least significant digit is uh, is first instead of the most significant. So normally... People, humans, we read like, you know, money or numbers and stuff like 100 is 100 or 125 is 125. And that's big Indian. The most significant will come first, 100 and then 20 and then 5 for the, you know, the tenths places. Um, but little Indian format would be 521. It would be interpreted the same, but in the PC, or well, I, I guess in the CPU, it, it, it interprets um, the least significant bytes first, the lower you know, values first, um, in sequential order, which if that didn't make any sense, I'm sorry, you can read up on Indianness, E-N-D-I-A-N, Indian, not the, you know, Native Americans or anything like that. So it looks in the first 512 bytes, it finds magic number <laughs> at the end and it reads it. And, um, if that's there, then it tries to boot from the first 512 bytes and then whatever was written, uh, there to handle the boot process then goes in and loads other stuff. So it's cool. I guess. I don't know. I'm interested in low-level stuff. I think it's cool. So I'm trying to learn it as I go along. But we're going to start from there today. Just do very basic. Um, get it to boot. Not really do much. Probably just hang there in, in the loop. But get it to boot from the first 512 bytes that we write for our x86 emulator emulation. So we'll do that. Um, now I'm on Linux. Now to get a basic 512-byte file... Um, you can use DD, which is what I'm going to do here. So DD, uh, input file. I just, I'm just going to fill it with zeros and then edit it. So, because if I just try to directly edit in hex mode in Emacs, it doesn't, it doesn't like empty files. I, I'm too dumb to figure out how to add to an empty file. So I just, I just do this first off because it's basic, simple. But DD, input file, IF equals, we're going to do dev, not null, dev zero. And that's just a file that gives you a zero. 
um, output file we're gonna have in this folder and we're just gonna make it um I think that that'll work we're gonna call it boot if you don't do it it'll just it'll just put it in this folder if you don't do the the beginning dot um we're just gonna call it boot boot sect or boot sector we're gonna call it a regular flat binary file I guess it'll be fine bootsec.bin, I think it's bs is the number of bytes, so we're going to do 512, and you can do count equals 1, or count is 1 by default, I think, but I'll just include it here, and this should make a 512 byte file filled with zeros, it'll be a flat binary file. So we got there, and we can check on it by using xxd, if you have that, let me get the mouse out of the way, it's probably annoying, right? xxd, we have 512 bytes of zeros, so, you know, not, not much to, uh, to begin with there. Now, for Emacs here, I'm still learning the, the keybinds and stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm going to open in the other window, I'm going to open the bootsec.bin. So, we don't know what's there, it's just we can't read it, so we have to move to uh, Hexel mode, which whatever that means. Um, and then we're going to go to the ending 2 bits, 512, or 511, 512, we're going to give it Insert a hex value here with, I think it's Control Alt X. Uh, we're gonna put five five and AA for the last two bytes because x86 is little Indian. Like I said, we need five five AA, even though the number is AA five five. Now the reason for that, which I didn't say, my bad. The reason for that is that in binary, or uh, five five or AA, I forget which is which at the moment, but it's alternating, so. Binary, we'll say this is hex, 0x, we'll say 0b is binary, right? So 55aa five five is like, uh, like 10101010, 10, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So it's alternating, right? Or the opposite if it's aa55, five five. however, 01010101, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 10101010. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So having it alternating, it's thought that maybe, I don't know for sure, but it's thought that maybe um, it's a way for the computer to tell on boot or another way for it to tell and have a check if, if the system is Little Indian or Big Indian because they're, they're alternating bytes. So, or it could be a check against like drive failures or driver failures or, or something with the media. I don't know. The bootable media. Um, but anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. And that might be why, you know, that's, that's why the number, the magic air quote number <laughs> is the way it is. But we put that at the end of the file here for x86, 55AA, for a Big Indian system, it would be AA55, because the most significant would, would uh, precede the least significant, like how people are used to reading. But we have that in there. And then we'll write it. Converting is fine. So we wrote the binary. So what do we do with that? Well, we need box to read it, and to have box read stuff, box, B -O -C -H -S box, the x86 emulator, to have it load something, we need a configuration file. So I'm just going to put it in my, my OS source here. I think it's box source or box RC. So we're gonna make that file, and then we're gonna. I guess we'll open it and uh, right here, right? We'll find file box source. So box to be able to boot needs its configuration file. So we're going to give it um, for our system at the moment. We're just gonna give it a floppy disk. We're gonna call it floppy A. All right. So yeah, box needs our our configuration file, we're gonna give it a 1.44 meg floppy, which is what this uh, signals. This signals the box, and I'm pointing at the screen because I'm tired. Probably need more, some more coffee here. But we give it the 1 underscore 44, which we, um, we're gonna have it boot from our, our, binary, our binary file here, which is boot sect, right, dot bin for boot sector. And then we give it status, the status of this floppy that we just gave it. We're going to say it's inserted, so it starts in the in the PC, in, you know, the PC that we're emulating. <laughs> and we're going to give it um, command to boot from A, or from the floppy. I think you can put floppy here, too. I put A, because it's floppy A, so I'm just, I guess it boots from the A drive, um, is what I'm assuming that means. So we'll write that file. And then we still have our, you know, our full 512 byte file here, 55A at the end, and I'm pointing at the screen again. <laughs> That's okay. So how do we get box to load our 
configuration file. I can use the mouse too. It's so easier sometimes. <laughs> How do we get Box to load the configuration file? It loads it automatically if it sees the dot box source file in the current folder you're trying to run it from. So if we run box right now, it will load that configuration file and it will load the the 512 bytes uh, file we have here on the right. And it should pop up a window. I'm going to make Emacs over here where you can't read it, but <laughs> just so we get the terminal on the same the same window as our thing here. Now when I first pop it up, see, you hear nothing nothing shows up, it's black, I thought something was wrong, but it's just, it boots up in like debug mode or something, right? So you have to give it a command to continue its processing. So you give it a C in your terminal that you spawned it from, put a C for continue, and it'll go on to load. Although we didn't give any instructions of what to do, it is it did boot. Otherwise, it would say like no bootable media or something similar. So it is it is booted. It's booting from our 512 byte binary file with the magic number at the end that says, "Hey, you should boot from here." Uh, but there's nothing to do from there. So I'm assuming it started reading from the front of the file and it's just trying to jump to some random place that exists, trying to boot something. It's just reading through memory. Not not really anything's happening, but it does boot. And this is proof of that, even if it doesn't seem like it. Um, so to end it in my terminal, you do a CC and CD. Usually, if you're not in Emacs, you do. <laughs> I'm going to get my laundry right quick. <laughs> My laundry's going off, so I need to I need to switch that over and come back. So, yeah, the point is that we booted, so that's good. And then I'll be back if I keep this in, and I I got a short intermission, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be back and I'll show how to uh, just loop uh, repeatedly inside 512 byte binary and also in assembly. So I'll do that. Okay guys, so um, now that we got something to boot technically, even though not, not much of anything happened really, it did boot because <laughs> it saw the 55AA here, we're going to have it just hang there and put a, put a very basic loop in so it, uh, it doesn't keep looking through memory, it just stays where we, where we boot from. And to do that, um, for this particular processor, or the, the last couple PCs I tried with Intel processors that are relatively recent in the last couple years, they both had the same op codes for jumping, so which I'm going to put here, which was, I believe, EB and FE. Now, this isn't really important because we're going to do this in assembly real soon. I'm just giving the op code in a machine code, rather, the machine code instruction and hex for uh, for just jump at this current address. It'll just, it'll hang here. It'll keep jumping to the current address. So it'll read the 55 AA. It'll be like, okay, I should boot from here. It'll start reading from the top, from the front, and it'll, the first instruction is basically just jump to the current address. So it'll, uh, it'll stay here and hang. Um, but it won't keep looking through memory in the terminal like it was. We'll save that. which made a bunch. Why did it do that? Oh, no, we don't want that. Don't save in the middle of your file, kids. Although it's not too badly important. We want this to be at the front. The front of our file. All right. It's really good still learning Emacs bindings and trying to talk. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it'll boot. It'll say, hey, we just jump here repeatedly. I'm going to use a separate terminal because... I don't, I just like how it works better than with Emacs usually, so at the moment. I haven't learned Emacs terminal, all the commands that map one to one, so I'm not going to deal with it, and that's, that's the best part. But we wrote it, so you're going to see, I'm going to, I hate that hot corner, I turn it off and it turns back on every single time I get back from sleep, so I don't know how to make this go away permanently, I don't like it, but anyway, I'm going to run box, and you're going to see it's just going to hang and not do anything. So we know it's repeating because the little cursor is blinking. It's just it's just jumping repeatedly at the current address. So that's nice. And maybe this something in here indicates that. I don't know. I think this is just CPU stuff lining up and being emulated. But yeah, it's booting from 7C00, which is typically where in your memory, your memory address that um, 
that your boot code is loaded is after the BIOS and after like really important first steps that your computer does when it boots up and BIOS being, I think, basic input output system or software, something like that. And it, it can handle, you can send uh, things called interrupts that you can code in assembly or, or what have you. And um, they'll, they'll signal the BIOS, which runs when your computer starts up, to do certain things. So you can send a BIOS interrupt to like write to the screen, which we'll do in a probably next video. Um, write to the screen, clear screen, show colors for like graphic stuff, or you, you can do other things like stuff with sound, maybe sound alarm. I don't know. But you can do different BIOS interrupts, which is cool. And computers start at the beginning of their memory. You know, you have the BIOS. You'll have, I'm getting this completely wrong. I apologize. But somewhere in there before uh, memory address hexadecimal 7C00, you have your BIOS code. You have um, like an interrupt table. I think that's the first actually is the interrupt table, which has a listing of all these interrupts that the BIOS can interpret, which is basically like a big list array. You send it a certain code. It looks in the table. It says, hey, I want to write to the screen because you wrote this interrupt. So we're... We do that, and then somewhere later along, that's before 7C, somewhere later along, it hits 7C00, and your BIOS code is here, because it doesn't want, your boot code is here, sorry, your boot sector, boot loader, what have you. You don't want it overriding your BIOS, and you don't want memory locations overriding each other, so they go in, in different locations by default to be loaded from. It's my understanding, very basic, probably wrong, but <laughs> and that's how I see it at the moment. Um, this is not meant to be professional by any means, or completely accurate, just one one guy's tired random musings at, at 6 in the morning, you know. Ah, that's good coffee, okay. So now that we got to boot in a repeated continuous loop, which we need to stop, so I'm going to stop that. Exit code 0, which is good, okay. We got to boot in a continuous loop. With this, we're also going to boot in a continuous loop, do the same thing, but in assembly, and that'll probably be it for this beginner video. So we're going to do that, um, which means I want to exit this. Um, I'm going to make a, should use keyboard more. I'm used to work where we have windows and everything's mouse driven. So it's better and faster to use keyboard only, but I'm still getting used to it, you know. But we're going to make a file for assembly. Um, I'm using FASM or flat assembler instead of the netwide assembler NASM because I don't I don't like dealing with manual linking. It's pretty fast, and I wanted to learn something different. I'm learning uh, NetWide Assembler for some things, and then I want to use FASM for other things. I just figure I'll use this for as a learning opportunity. But if you didn't know about it, it's a different assembler. It works pretty much the same way. It's just, I like it. It's, it's pretty cool. It has some unique ideas. You can read up on it on your own, I'd say. I'm not going to explain it, because I do a terrible job. Uh, and it'd be wrong, probably. But I'm going to make our... Uh, our boot thing here, we're gonna call it boot too big for his feet. No, boot too big. No, boot sect dot asm. Boot sec dot assembly. We're gonna make that file. I'm gonna open it in here. Dot assembler. Dot assembly. However you say it. Emacs goes into assembler mode, which I don't like usually, but we're just gonna have uh, basic boot sector. That will jump, I don't know, continuously. <laughs> this is just a comment in, assemb in assembly, assembler. Just like three headings. Well, a semicolon is a comment, but we're just going to do this. So how do we recreate the 512-byte file in here? Well, we're going to use our jump instruction, which we can do it a couple different ways. We can do jump dollar sign, which will just jump to the current address that we're at. Um, or I think I learned it as give it a label. We'll just call it loop and then jump loop and that'll just jump continuously to the label So that'll do the same thing. And if that's easier to understand, I'll just keep this this one here But I'm just gonna call it jump Repeatedly to label loop um, Never ending I don't know if <laughs> The loop the loop never ends so I'll put never ending so we want it, that'll be the first byte in our file pretty much. It should, it should equal the same thing in, uh, in binary and hexadecimal. It should equate to the same 512 byte file. But how do we fill out the rest of the file? To fill out all the zeros first, we're going to do times uh, 510 minus, is it one or two? It's one, the current address. 
minus, I think, where this is. I don't quite understand how this works yet. Define byte zero. All right, so this this opcode here times 510 minus dollar minus dollar dollar db0 uh, pads out zeros until we reach the 510th byte. So I'm assuming that the db0 here is define byte zero. So we're putting a zero in uh, for every position from this point in the code up until the 510th byte. That's basically what this is doing. I know the dollars, I think current position, this might be the current position of this, this whole line here, I guess. So I don't know. But anyway, I can't, I can't think at the moment why this works, but it does. <laughs> it does. I'm just terrible at explaining. But we have our jump instruction at the beginning. We pad the rest out with zeros to 510th byte. So the 511, 512th byte, we need to be the magic number. And to that, we're going to define a word, which is, uh, I think, two bytes is normally is a word. So we're in 16-bit real mode is what this will be in uh, when it boots up. Uh, computers start when they boot in 16-bit mode. And then you have to write a bootloader or somehow load a kernel or something that moves you to 32-bit protected mode or even 64-bit, depending on your system and what you want to do. If you want to use more than 4 gigs of RAM, for example, or access a bunch of memory space. Um, but we'll define our, our word here is hex 0xAA55, because we're a little Indian, the 55 will go first. And then we're just going to call it... Um, I don't know, BIOS magic number or boot, boot magic number, whatever we want to define it as. But we, we just do that. And that's our whole assembly file, <laughs> our whole boot sector 512 byte file that'll boot continuously, do the same thing we just did, but a bit easier to read maybe than just um, archaic esoteric uh, symbols <laughs> and hexadecimal, which is fine. But we'll write this now. How do we compile this or assemble it as it were, not compiling. Um, to do this, flat assembler by default makes a binary file and it will be the same name. Now to prove this, I'm gonna remove the other bootsec.bin. But by default, phasm outputs a flat binary file and by default it's in 16-bit real mode. So <laughs> for this purpose, it's really easy to use flat assembler. You just give it the name of it, phasm and then a uh, bootsec.assembly, or .assembler, however that's read. Um, and this should make uh, reserved word uses symbols. So in, flat, in, <laughs> in net white assembler, you can do this, but in flat assembler, you can't, and that is a name a label loop. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna name it uh, here, and we're just gonna jump here, and maybe that'll work. So I meant to show that on purpose. I didn't forget that, of course not. I haven't done this before. But anyway, give it the name of it, Flat Assembler. One pass, you can do multiple passes, depending on how you want to optimize it. Um, but Flat Assembler is pretty dang fast, too. But you just do that, and then you'll see we have our binary file. Um, we didn't remove the other one, because Emacs makes another one. So let me just make sure these both are removed first, so you can see. We don't have it, and we do have it. So I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that. Now if we run box again, the same thing should happen as with this, the regular binary file that we wrote to. It should just loop continuously if we continue. And you'll see the cursor, it's doing the same thing. Cursor is just repeating, it's trying to boot, nothing's there, it's just jumping repeatedly. Um, but we are actually booting, so just wanted to prove that that is true. And it is, so we're good. And also to show, I can... Uh, do XXD again to show the output of the binary file, and it is 55AA EBFE for the jump. So it is the same thing, but it's a lot easier to write in assembly because we don't memorize all the opcodes, or maybe you do because you're awesome and not masochistic. You're just a really nice guy, and you're really cool. Um, that's not sarcasm. <laughs> I don't have memory for that with my regular work going on, but that's all we're doing here. Um, so cool, that's all I really wanted to do for this video was just show you a basic setup, a very basic boot sector, maybe the probably the most basic you can get, which is just the number at the end, or two numbers, two hexadecimal bytes, a word, um, and jumping continuously to show that uh, that's all you need to boot. It doesn't do anything, but it boots, and that's how a PC would start up. If you wrote this to actual physical media, like a USB drive and booted it from, it 
um, and wrote it to the drive like with DD, not put it in a folder and try to run it now, but wrote it to the drive like with Rufus, a utility on Windows or, um, or DD on Linux. Um, then it should do the same thing. Now your BIOS will be different because you'll see, you know, with the splash screen that first shows up, but it should just hang there repeatedly. I would think. I'm not going to try it on real hardware because I don't feel like doing it, but <laughs> Box takes care of that for us for the moment. Uh, but yeah, it boots. Hopefully you found it interesting um, and you're still watching. If not, that's fine too. Uh, if you found any parts of it interesting, cool. If you can think of things I can do to improve this, either quality-wise or, you know, make the text bigger or something, which I'll probably do. I just realize that. Um, I can read it, but maybe you can't because it's small. Um, then let me know about that. If you want to see other topics related to this or something, let me know. The next video I'll do on this will probably just be writing to screen using BIOS interrupt from assembler here, from assembly, still in 16-bit real mode. So next video we'll write to screen, um, basic strings, characters, and maybe hex as well, depending how long it takes. But yeah, so this probably dro drag on a bit and I'm not helping it by keeping rambling on here. So <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.